Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Muskegon City Commission meeting for April 12, 2016. Before we begin the proceedings, I ask you all to stand, which you're already doing. Thank you. And I'd like to invite up uh, Pastor Matt Sharp from Evanston Avenue uh, Church to lead us in prayer, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor. Thank you. Let us pray. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. And out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established your strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. Father, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, who are we that you are mindful of us? Who is the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and yet crowned him with glory and honor. You have given us dominion over the work of your hands and have put all things under our feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heaven, and the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And Holy Father, as you have given us dominion over these things, we praise your grace and mercy. And Lord, we ask again for your wisdom, that we may lead and guide your people well, to your glory and in your honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Rinsma Sivica? Here. Commissioner Turnquist? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Here. Mayor Galrin? Here. Vice Mayor Hood? Here. Commissioner Warren? Absent. Commissioner German? Here. Thank you. Before we get into the regular proceedings for the night, we do have some introductions and a presentation. Uh, who's leading off the Sister Cities report? Uh, that would be you, yeah. <laughs> All of you. All of you. I just have you uh, introduce yourself and perhaps your uh, position with the uh, organization. We brought some pictures. Uh, we tried to pick through some of them, obviously. I think we all filled our phones, our cameras, uh, the clouds, everything had been, had been filled. But uh, I'm Joel Ertman, uh, one of the chaperones uh, that was lucky enough to uh, take a group um, of students just about a month ago uh, to Omuta, Japan. And I basically I talked to them today about sharing kind of the most memorable thing or what's going to stick with you the most. And as a history teacher and a history geek, I was really... Um, I guess I was really impressed and in awe at how many parallels our two cities have um, between their industrial background. Um, for the life of me, I cannot remember. Any students? Uh, do you remember the man's name that we made parallels to Charles Hadley with? Uh, Dan. 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 Dan something with a G. Dan. Dan. Well, the interesting thing was was that there were so many parallels between some of the, the great philanthropists of their city um, that grew um, their city to what it is today and even some of the struggles their city has today with much of their industry that has been lost and then kind of trying to create a new identity. Um, and obviously the history is much older uh, in Japan, but it really left me with a lasting impression of how we can be worlds and worlds away, yet there are really so many parallels between the lives that their citizens live um, in Omata and what we have here. So that's what I what I took away from the trip. So uh, Dana Wyant, a high school English teacher at Orchard View, another chaperone. Um, what I took away was just the experience that the kids had. It was really awesome to see these kids build relationships with their host families, kids, and, and just establish relationships there. We have a couple students who are already planning to go back to Japan, even in the summer, this summer, uh, which is awesome. So that was really um, a, a good thing for me to see. I really enjoyed watching that. So. 
Um, I'm Madison Rose. I'm a student at Orchard View. And the trip was really cool to experience like what their schools were like, like compared to ours. They're so different. Like their elementary school like cleans up after themselves. We can't even get our high school students to do that sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it was really cool. Hello, I'm Avery Agard from Mona Shores High School. And what I took away most from my experience in Omida, Japan was how welcoming the people were to us, even though we hardly spoke any of their language. <laughs> they were very courteous and patient with us, and I really do think we could learn a thing or two from how they treat people who are not the same as them. I liked the cultural aspect about it. When we made sushi, it was totally a different world. With the, also the kimonos trying on, it was a long process to get these on, and it was very beautiful. <laughs> My name's Taylor Rennick from Orchard View High School. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Victoria Darnell, and I'm from Muskegon High School. And I think my favorite part about the trip was just how beautiful the place was that we were in and how amazing the people were. And like, they're so, like Avery said, they're so welcoming to everyone. And I plan on going back this summer to visit my host family and another family that I grew really close to over the time that I was there. And it was just an amazing opportunity to be able to go. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. So, no remarks about uh, the dumplings or the noodles? Yeah. <laughs> The noodles I could handle, the dumplings were good. Um, some of the things I will try to forget. Um, yeah, I know. We had many students who absolutely uh, embraced, embraced, really embraced the food. And I will say all the students um, did an amazing job at embracing all of it regardless. You know, So in that way, I thought they were um, very mature and represented us well and respected everything that they brought in front of us. Sometimes very adventurous. Sometimes very adventurous, um, particularly like tonight being on live television and you're on live television and they're putting something in your face saying, hey, how does this taste? Right. And you're on live television and I know there were a lot we of... We said it was delicious. We said it was delicious. <laughs> and there were many people at home watching the news that night who were laughing at some Americans, yeah. I'm sure. So, uh, but overall, um, obviously just a small uh, portion of the group could uh, be here tonight, but we are going to continue to do these presentations at some of the uh, school board meetings and for Norton Shores and North Muskegon. Um, but otherwise, we thank you, you for your support as well. And um, we hope you enjoy the pictures. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for um, representing us in person. I'm sure you did a fantastic job with representing the Muskegon area with our sister city. We uh, share uh, just a wonderful, loving uh, relationship with Omuta. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it's uh, something that is not impacted uh, by the distance because of uh, the, uh, well, relationships are hard work, but uh, the, uh, I've done a, a fantastic job um, with uh, maintaining those ties. And when their mayor comes over, we give them an awfully nice jacket and, uh, to, to show our appreciation of our relationship. But thank you so much. and. Uh, I'm uh, delighted that you had such a wonderful um, experience. And uh, remember, you too can show what Muskegon hospitality and courtesy is all about now and through the rest of your life. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. May we have the consent agenda, please? Approval of minutes, City Clerk, summary request to approve minutes of the March 22nd, 2016 regular City Commission meeting. Staff recommendation, approval of the minutes. Approval of the use and maintenance of city-owned property at 1349 6th Street, planning economic development. 
summary request to approve the use and maintenance of the city owned property located at 1349 6th Street for a community garden. The property is buildable and the city would retain the right to sell the property with a community gardens member having time to remove the garden prior to any sales. Staff recommendation to approve the resolution and maintenance agreement. Intergovernmental agreement for traffic signal maintenance contract, Department of Public Works. Summary request. Authorize staff to sign an intergovernmental agreement for traffic signal maintenance. This is a three-year contract with a possible one-year extension with the Muskegon County Road Commission, along with other municipalities from April 17, 2016 through April 30, 2019 with Windmuller Electric Incorporated as the traffic signal maintenance contractor. The agreement calls for Muskegon County Road Commission to administer the project and charge a one-time administration fee of $200 for the preparation and letting of the bid proposal. The local agencies including, included in the Muskegon County Signal Maintenance Group, which are each built separately for services rendered by the contractor, are the Muskegon County Road Commission, the cities of Muskegon, North Muskegon, Norton Shores, Roosevelt Park, the Village of Fruitport, and MDOT. Staff recommendation, approve the request. Request to purchase docks for JC's launch ramp, Department of Public Works. Summary request, authorize staff to contract with the sole source supplier Stable Floats Systems out of Grant, Michigan to replace two floating docks at the JC's launch ramp. Staff recommendation, authorize staff to hire Stable Float Systems LLC. Sale of buildable vacant lot at 1315 McLaughlin, planning <coughs> and economic development. Summary request to approve the sale of a vacant buildable lot at 1315 McLaughlin to Pamela Roche to combine with her property at 1307 McLaughlin Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan. The lot is 62 by 120 feet and is being offered to Pamela Roche for $500 plus the fee to register the deed. Pamela Roche will be combining this property with her existing property. The city has owned the property since April 1995 with no inquiries for potential construction. By combining this with Mrs. Roche's property, this will give her a side yard, which she currently does not have. This is in Sheldon Park neighborhood. The city has spent an average of $233.83 per year in maintenance of the vacant lot since 2002. Staff recommendation to approve the resolution authorize both the mayor and the clerk to sign said resolution and deed. Water System Reliability Study, Department of Public Works. Summary request, authorize staff to enter into an agreement with Prine and Newhoff to perform a state mandated reliability study per Michigan's Safe Drinking Water Act of 1976 with the city of Roosevelt Park and the city of North Muskegon. Prine and Newhoff is currently working on other surrounding area municipal reliability studies and we are trying to take advantage of the request for proposals. Staff recommendation, authorize staff to enter into an agreement with Prine and Newhoff. Beverage vending contract for Parks Marina Facilities, Department of Public Works. Summary request, authorize staff to enter into a three-year contractual agreement with Pepsi Beverages <coughs> Company to provide vending services at various city parks and marina facilities. Staff recommendation, approve the contract and authorize staff to enter into a three-year agreement with Pepsi Beverages Company. 2016-2017 water treatment sodium hypochlorite bids, Department of Public Works water filtration plant. Summary request, recommend endorsement of lowest responsible bidder to supply sodium hypochlorite for the water filtration plant. Staff recommendation, staff recommends the mayor and city commission endorse the low bid received and allow staff to enter into a contract with <coughs> Alexander for sodium hypochlorite for one year beginning April 16, 2016. Thank you. Commissioners, you've heard the consent agenda as presented. Are there any items you wish to have removed for further discussion? Vice Mayor? Uh, move to remove uh, item B. Any others? Uh, item F. So I can know more about that. And H as well. Okay. Commissioner Johnson? Seeing no others, I would move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Mine is items B as in boy, F as in Frank, and H as in Harry. Support. It's been moved by Commissioner Johnson, supported by Commissioner Renzo Savinga to accept the consent agenda as presented minus items B, F, and H. Commissioner Johnson? I'm sorry. Uh, roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Yeah. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galrin? Yes. Vice Mayor Hood? Yes. 
Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Rinson Masibiga? Yes. Motion passes. And you wanted to speak on the but you want you want to make the motion on the <coughs> I move to approve item B of the approval of use and maintenance of city owned property at 1349 6th Street Planning and Economic Development Department. Support. It's been moved by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Johnson to approve the resolution and maintenance agreement for the approval of the uh, city-owned property at 1349 6th Street as Community Garden. Commissioner. Yes, I wanted to um, note that this agreement is with the Nelson Neighborhood Improvement Association and I'm a member of that board, so um, I wanted to disclose that. Um, I don't think that this um, agreement um, is, is a conflict of interest after consulting with the city attorney because um, there's no monetary benefit or personally or for the organization through this um, agreement so it's okay to vote on it but I just wanted to disclose that uh, unless you're getting the first pick of the tomatoes <laughs> yeah. uh, I haven't traditionally oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> okay any other questions roll call please Commissioner Johnson yes Mayor Galrin yes Vice Mayor Hood yes Mr. German Yes. Mr. Rinson Yes. Mr. Turnquist. Yes. Motion passes. Great. Go turn some dirt. Commissioner German. Yes. AMF. Yeah, thank you. Um, motion to authorize staff to enter into agreement with Crane and Newhoff Water System Reliability Study. Support. It's been moved by Commissioner German, supported by Commissioner Rinsma Savingen, to authorize staff to enter into an agreement with Prine and Newhoff for the water system reliable, reliability study. Commissioner German. Yes, um, I'd just like to uh, get some uh, insight on what this study is going to consist of. And uh, I know we have two new municipalities actually joining us. That who we're going to supply water to. So does it have anything to do with that? Also. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, the, if I understood your question correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, if, if you would, the two, agent, uh, the two municipalities that joined us had nothing to do with this study and have nothing to do with this study. This is a separate study that is required by the Department of Environmental Quality to be performed every five years on the reliability of the distribution system that we have on the ground, which means the sizing, uh, lubing, Upgrading pipes and, and stuff like that. It has. That's what it. Ha that's what this study will do uh, for us. Okay, and um, we have that in our budget. But also, when you said piping, also, and you're talking about, I guess, the infrastructure. Um, are we in need of replacing, or is there a target area that's designated that we need to specifically look at doing this study to replacing any type of piping? In Yes. Okay. So we're not. But 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 this study, like I said, I think this. Do we have needs? Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. As a matter of fact, my understanding in 2018, the DEQ is requiring uh, uh, an asset management type of evaluation for all of our system uh, that will allow us to establish age and replacement schedule and all of that stuff. So what we're expecting out of this study to come out and, and, and to give us, where do we have, for example, uh, weak pressures, where do we have uh, disconnectivity, if you will, within pipes, where do we need to upgrade the pipes, and we take that study and try to incorporate the projects into future capital improvement projects and or maintenance uh, within the Department of Public Works, like, uh, I'm, I don't know if you've seen them out, with the 2011-12 the, the study showed us a couple of areas where we could have connected, uh, we could connect a couple of pipes, if you will that would help us uh, provide some redundancy and reliability and increase the flow. Okay. Okay. And what is the cost of the study? $32,000. The, the total engineering fee is $52,000, dollars 32 of which would be the city of Muskegon's responsibility, and 10 each for North Muskegon and uh, Roosevelt Park, because we provide them with the uh, <coughs> They want it to be a part of our system, our study. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Mr. Al Chatel? Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Galrin. Yes. Vice Mayor Hood. Yes. Commissioner German. 
Yes. Commissioner Rensselaer Civica. Yes. Commissioner Turnquist. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Motion passes. Item H, Commissioner German. All right. Thank you. Uh, motion to uh, for staff. Uh, recommend the uh, mayor and city commissioners to endorse the lowest bid receive and allow staff to enter into a contract uh, with Alexander for sodium hydrochloride for one year beginning April 16, 2016. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner German, seconded by the vice mayor to endorse the low bid received and allow staff to enter into a contract <coughs> with Alexander for the sodium hypochloride for one year beginning April the 16th, 2016. Commissioner German. Okay, on this one here, um, this is pretty much self-explanatory, but I um, always get feedback from citizens in the community when they talk about um, the fluoride and stuff in the water, or hydrochloride. Um, could you give me a, um, I could just guess a preview of what and the amount of uh, this uh, chemical that's going into the water that citizens are drinking? Well, I cannot give you the exact makeup of the, 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 the ratio because the rate of application for chemicals depends on different things, the, the temperature of the water itself and the circumstances. So I can, you know, those fluctuate, if you will, the application rate. But I think what, if I may uh, in suggest, I think it's the fluoride that has been an issue that had been contested, if you mm -hmm. will, or questioned. Uh, there's uh, some agencies that have chosen not to apply fluoride, and I can't remember if Grand Rapids is one of them or not, but without getting into any specific agencies, that's, that has been an issue that had been debated uh, in the past. We spend around forty to $50,000 on fluoride application, and we do apply fluoride because that's recommended by by the state agency, I believe, and the dental uh, association as well. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Hood? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Rinsen Massipiga? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Gallman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Public hearings. Request to establish an obsolete property district, 794 Pine Street, planning and economic development. Summary request. Pursuant to Public Act 146 of the Michigan Public Acts of 2000, Core Park Investment LLC, 111 West Western Avenue in Muskegon, has requested the establishment of an obsolete property district that would allow them to apply for an obsolete property re rehabilitation exemption certificate. Staff recommendations. Staff recommends approval of the obsolete property district. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Francis. Good evening. Um, so this abatement request here is for the old uh, Al Perry Furniture Building on Pine Street. It's sat vacant for many years, and uh, we're going to try to use this incentive to um, get the, the project, uh, the building rehabbed again. We have Mr. John Exis here from Core Park Investments. Um, it's going to be used um, as office buildings. I believe they already have a couple of tenants uh, signed on. Uh, we first need to establish the district uh, to, to be able to uh, establish and grant the certificate. Very good. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Francis? Okay. Commissioner Johnson. Oh, okay. It's a public hearing. Oh, it is a public hearing. <clears throat> Are there any uh, members of the public that would like to address the uh, issue of the establishment of the obsolete property district for seven? 94 Pine Street. If not, I'd, I'd move to uh, close the public hearing um, and uh, have and move to approve the obsolete property district. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Johnson, <coughs> seconded by Commissioner German to close the public hearing and establish an obsolete property district at 794 Pine Street. Any discussion or further? Uh, Questions for staff? Uh, I'd just like to make a comment. I think uh, I'm fully supportive of this. Um, I'm excited to see the development happening on Pine Street in particular. Um, while there's a lot of attention and focus by the city and others on our very city center of Western and Third, um, I, I see Pine Street as having a great deal of potential um, as a commercial corridor. So I do um, thank Mr. Essex and um, 
his companies for for investing in that and rehabbing that. I also appreciate um, his company's uh, relocating Port City Group to our downtown Muskegon and also involvement with uh, Core Realty, another new business downtown. And um, I really uh, appreciate the, the amount of investment and, and time and attention, energy you're putting into um, our city and our downtown. So I'm excited for this to happen and I look forward to, to the rehab being completed. And, and also you're going back to the original historic facade on it as well. So um, thank you. John, did you have anything you wanted to say, or? Yeah, I can. You um, do? <laughs> thank you. Well, I never, you know, without words. Um, well, well, come thank on you up. Very much for the opportunity. Um, actually, I'm here in a different capacity as the uh, owner and CEO of Port City, but uh, tonight it's in a different capacity. Uh, working on our, well, this will be the third property downtown uh, that we're going to inhabit and, and, and redevelop. Uh, you know, a lot of our history down here we've lost. You know, so you'll go downtown, and I remember as a kid, even before the mall went in, going down and, you know, the, all the stores and, and a lot of that has been lost. And that building before, when it was, uh, you know, I remember it from when I owed Al my life for my first couch I bought. Um, but, uh, you know, when you really look through it, it's a, about a hundred year old building that has been a piece of this history for a very long period of time. And to bring it back to, you know, what it once was um, is worth the, worth the spend. I haven't spent a whole lot of time on whether or not this is going to pay back or not, but uh, it'll be a good investment long term. That's great. So That's great. We've, uh, obviously, most of you know we did the uh, the old Chronicle Circulation Building and got that back into use. Moved all our corporate people from Laketon over here downtown, and are continuing to migrate more of the folks down here. Um, may even use uh, 794 for some of the Port City functions at some point, depending on on need. And as we grow, we're almost uh, 700 people at right. Port City now, so uh, we're running out of room at Laketon as well. So, uh, but really, thank you for giving us this consideration makes it a lot easier. Um, we're planning on having all of the updated drawings and CDS here in Muskegon is doing, uh, doing all the engineering work. Uh, should have that submitted in the next two to three weeks and our plan is if everything goes right to start construction in June. So uh, again, thank you very much for your support and uh, it's nice to be uh, doing another project downtown. So. It's, it's uh, exciting to see uh, the, the traditional old Main yeah. Street uh, because every time one burnt down, you know, we just kind of moved it. And yeah. <laughs> so, but, but, uh, and uh, congratulations too with uh, your joining with uh, Pace Industrials. Now you're uh, you. the nation's uh, largest uh, zinc the and largest aluminum, aluminum die casting, die casting company in the country now. Yes. Yeah. 4,400 4, employees. I am still the largest individual shareholder. Um, of the whole thing, so I've got to spend more time on the road now. But there you uh, are. But, but um, we'd, we'd love to see any of those folks from Fayetteville, Arkansas, move up our way. You know what? We always, I always continue to try to get them to <laughs> encourage that. I think the Southern Draw might all set us off up here. But I think other than that, uh, you know, it's a good group. It allows us the flexibility to really take us to the next level. That's and great. To really, you know, when we were making decisions for the business based on what my appetite was for guaranteeing loans at the bank, it was time to take a different approach. And we were putting off opportunities that would have been good for us that allowed us to hire more people and to expand into the building on Latimer. So this has been a really good thing for us. So. That's great. Well, we, uh, we appreciate <coughs> your involvement and your uh, commitment to uh, Greater Muskegon John. We really well, do in your, yeah, in your here. growing That's presence uh, within the, uh, the old traditional business district. Yeah, well, this is, this is my home. This is where I was raised. And you know, this is where I will die. So very good. I'm ha very happy to be that part of this if I can. So thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner German. Yes. Commissioner Ritzel Yes. Commissioner Turnquist. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Mayor Galrin. Yes. Vice Mayor Hood. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item B, please, under public hearings. Request to issue an obsolete property certificate, Core Park Investments LLC, 794 <coughs> Pine Street, Planning Economic Development. Summary request, pursuant to Public Act 146 of the Michigan Public Acts of 2000, Core Park Investments LLC, 111 West Western Avenue, located in Muskegon, has requested the issuance of an obsolete property certificate for their property located at 794 Pine Street. Total capital investment for this project is $600,000. The applicant is eligible for a 12-year abatement because of the amount of investment. Staff recommendation, staff recommends approval of the obsolete property rehabilitation exemption certificate. This is the piggyback to uh, having established the uh, obsolete property district. Are there any additional questions that you would uh, like to ask of uh, staff? 
Are there any members of the public that would like to address the issue of the issuance of the obsolete property certificate uh, for 794 Pine Street? Commissioner Rinsman Savinga. I move we close the public hearing and approve the obsolete property rehabilitation exemption, exemption certificate for 794 Pine Street. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Renzema Sabinga, seconded by the Vice Mayor, to approve the obsolete property rehabilitation exemption certificate for 794 Pine Street. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Sherman? Yes. Commissioner Rinsma Sabinga? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mayor Galran? Yes. Vice Mayor Hood? Yes. Motion passes. Good luck, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other busyness? <laughs> oh, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just wanted to comment on uh, our work session last night um, and, and inform attendees here and also viewers at home uh, that this commission approved a resolution supporting Muskegon Public Schools um, one mill sinking fund last night. We decided to, do, normally we do this at our general sessions, but we decided to do it last night um, because we were missing one person tonight and we thought it was important to have a unanimous um, uh, voice on, on this matter. Um, as you may know, Muskegon Public Schools has a sinking fund uh, millage request on the ballot for May 3rd. Um, this uh, would help provide funds for maintenance and repairs, much needed maintenance and repairs at Muskegon Public School facilities. Uh, a regular uh, qualified millage uh, does not allow these types of repairs, plaster repair for repairs um, that a sinking fund um, would allow. Um, and so the, the commission um, in the city of Muskegon is very uh, interested in supporting Muskegon Public Schools, recognizing the importance of the school district to our past and our present and to our future. Um, so we uh, wanted to follow up on, on our words of commitment with action by supporting this resolution um, and we're encouraging uh, residents in the city of Muskegon to support this as well. And just to note that uh, all voters registered as of April 4th, 2016 um, can vote on the May 3rd uh, millage request. And that's regardless, just a reminder, because some people are con maybe confused about this, but that's regardless of whether you own or rent your residence. Um, if you are living in the city of Muskegon and you are registered to vote as of April 4th, 2016, you may vote in the May 3rd um, uh, election. So I just wanted to, to get that out there and uh, let people know that we're, we're uh, very um, enthusiastically supporting Muskegon Public Schools and we'll continue to partner with the school district uh, going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner German. Yeah, also just to piggyback off what Commissioner Johnson stated also, and this millage, uh, if approved um, by the voters, uh, those dollars from this uh, shrinking fund will only be allocated to the purpose of the maintenance of uh, uh, repairing the building and um, whatever that the millage is for. So they can't allocate those dollars anywhere else other than what they had uh, millage that uh, millage for. So. Just to let you know as well. Anything else, gentlemen? Thank you. Uh, we have time then for uh, public participation. If there are any uh, members of the audience that would like to address the commission, each individual is given three minutes. Um, you're asked to provide your name and address. Um, you're also further asked to um, direct your comments to the chair. That would be me. Uh, commissioners would withhold. Um, any uh, comments till after the period is over. Uh, if you have a specific issue beyond uh, comments, we may not necessarily be able to answer those uh, in total. Um, but depending on the nature of the issue, then we could always put you in uh, contact with the appropriate staff uh, that could work on getting a satisfactory uh, response in one way, shape, or form. So, are there any members of the uh, audience? Sir? My name is Thomas Hardy, also known as Cowboy. I work, uh, I work at Community Encompass. I'm also part of the Nelson Neighborhood Association. I'm the chairperson for the garden. <coughs> I wanted to come up here in the give my thanks to the commission for uh, approving 
the lot at 1439 uh, 6th Street for us to put our new garden in. Our Thank pleasure, you. cowboy. Thank you. Are there any other members of the uh, public with, that would like to address the uh, commission? Yes, I have some. <laughs> Quick, hopefully quick. I'm uh, Josh Machino. I just actually moved up here from Southern Indiana to work on some green initiatives, and I'm actually staying at 816 Washington Avenue. And I'm actually requesting a change in one of your ordinances for solid waste to allow for the construction of or landscaping of tires, which are not allowed right now in the city ordinance. You can't do anything with them and I'm actually I got a lot I'm building with them right now and as of right now I can't build it I'm not allowed to do it because car tires can only be on tires so I'm actually wanting to propose a change to the ordinance to allow for construction of tires okay. and if you have any questions I got some photos or I mean I've someone I can talk to to try and put this in the order okay, is all I'm which, asking. Which department would handle Frank Zach over there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there would be the staff member to start at that level and uh, you can see him uh, after the meeting because right. there's a there's a whole layer before us. Right. Uh, is there any way to get a hold on tires being removed by safe built by tomorrow? to undergo the process. That. Are you interested in tires? Is that what you said? Yeah, well, I have tires that are built as like, compost barriers and planters, and they, by safe, are scheduled to be removed tomorrow or get a ticket. Or it's, and it's, some of them are going to be a pain to butt to move because they're full of sand and dirt and not holding water. So. OK, yeah, um, there again. We could not authorize, you know, that, but uh, you have to go through the, you know, appropriate layers. Yes. Okay. Which is it, what I'm trying to do. So. Okay. Thank, but thank you so much for your time, oh, and you I do you. love Muskegon, and I do, it's surprisingly a lot like and, and how Southern long Indiana have? since November. Okay. Well, I am. Um, I feel very at home here, basically. Very good. Very good. Um, okay. Vice Mayor? Um, if you don't mind, Mayor. Can I just take a look at some of your pictures? Yeah. So, these are the ones actually taken by Safeville. Like the ones in the top corner are just multicolored, just for use. They're just filled with mulch and dirt and around the stump. And then that's like the compost barrier. Where, where were these tires placed here? How long have they been there? Uh, about a month. I'm pretty familiar mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> yep, because I think they moved from another place. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, too. <laughs> cool. um, oh, those are uh, oh, the. Uh, those are hungry caterpillar? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the, there's one <laughs> green tire from your cow pitcher. They used to be the hungry caterpillar. They used to be. The, the, used to be. Uh, the rest of them are in the landfill. All right. Sadly. No, so excuse me. You said you actually want to collect these tires, or yes, something? and actually, I'm exactly planning on opening up like a parking lot that people can bring in tires 24 hours a day to be loaded on a semi or pick them up, dropping off. Okay. Yeah. And like house? what? At your house? No, actually, they would be actually in a parking lot somewhere, like an industrial lot. And the idea is like there'd be a lot of tire structures in the lot. And yeah. I would actually pay to have the tires shipped out. Okay. <coughs> Start with our expert. Thank you very much. You betcha. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to address the commission? If not, Vice Mayor. There's nothing else I need to adjourn. Second. It's been moved by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner German to adjourn. All in favor. Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Have a good evening, all.